Earth Spirit kick uh, to knock you out of the core. Uh, I'd say the main counter to Puck is to actually just stand still. And they're not going to allow you to do that. It's also nice against the Monkey King's ring, I assume. Like, it's another way yep. to force him out uh, of his own ultimate. Uh, rather than trying to kill the Monkey King in the ultimate, another solution is just get him out of it. Yeah, no, I, I when I saw this duo, I was like, oh, that's a liquid duo for sure. It's just normally it's Boxy playing the puck. But as you pointed out, this is liquid has been uh, playing around with a lot, which is switching their three and four positions uh, quite a bit where we've seen Taiga in the previous patch uh, actually taking more of the core role in that off lane. And uh, Boxy has played mid a couple of times. But then the other thing is they're giving Mickey like these uh, real playmaking i'm not even sure if i can call them carries because it's like snap fire here we're going to be puck pick up uh, it feels like this team is very comfortable at shifting um whatever they feel the is going to work begins. for the city yeah maybe he's not going to do anything too but is there a chance we see like the phase shift attacks from a desto or a maelstrom coming up? uh what about the witch's blade I've seen that a few oh times, yes right? that's true yeah. the witch's blade too yeah I just think they do, even though they have the Pango um, with the last pick, which was a nice pickup in order to clean up a lot of the summons, I think it's not necessarily reliably enough when you get to, like, the 25, 30-minute mark in the game. Okay, so it looks gonna like we're going to be doing a lot of lane swaps. Uh, what is it that Liquid wanted to avoid here? Because if they stuck with the Puck mid, I'm assuming just because they want the levels on him rather than the Druid going mid, but what about these sidelines? I think it's the Pango versus the Lycan matchup they wanted. I think they were trying to dodge Pango versus Monkey King because Pango loves fighting against the Wolves because uh, the Wolves are only strong against magic damage. Swashbuckle is physical, while on the other hand, Monkey King is quite happy to play against any melee hero. And, uh, and he wouldn't be happy Pango playing against Monkey King alone through it, right? Like, it's just exactly. a pair being in his face all the time, not able to get the Jingu. We're seeing some fighting up here in the top lane, a little bit back and forth between the <laughs> forts who are trying to deal with the wolves and uh, get them out of here. But uh, good job by Viking GG. Toby controls it pretty well, and they actually deny both of them. Yeah, it looks like Viking GG is going to get the lanes that they want. But honestly, I don't think these lanes are too bad. Fox is going to pay the price a little bit. But as you see, there's always an answer in the off lane. Taiga is just going to drag his creeps all the way back to the tier three. The, uh, the dire pull. You can't go between the tier one and tier two. You got to go all the way back between the tier two and tier three. The uh, fortunately, Celery's got enough space that he can just follow. And basically, have a CS battle. See how mids go in ten and one for Mickey, compared to eleven and one for Boom. Boom has been super impressive. This uh, this entire quarantine season as uh, a mid laner for Viking GG. I feel like he has been so integral to their success. Yeah, I remember him being the guy that revealed how broken Quap was uh, about last year or so. I, uh, I definitely will not forget the impact he had in that tournament. They took the game off the secret, uh, off the back of his performance. And I love this Void Spirit versus Puck matchup because both heroes build to kill each other. And it's all about execution. It's all about who catches each other with their pants down later on. And uh, I've seen people willingly pick Puck into Void Spirit. I see people willingly pick Void Spirit into Puck. And uh, I, it's just a fun match. It's gonna have to swatch the whole way. The pressure of the Monkey King is a, a little bit too much. I was also distracted by the fact that uh, apparently Koifa named you his bear after winning. How cute is that? That's the true carry on the team. Bear. It, I guess cute's a word that you can use for it. <laughs> what would you use for it? Uh, I'd, I'd call it a little, uh, little... I don't know. You maybe, think he's being demeaning to his ally, his teammate? He's like, I own you, in a way? Uh, yeah, you can twist it that way. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Well, well, the toxic That's American better than anything I would that. come up with. <laughs> Well, we have yet to have a first blood, but maybe when we can power runes, sure, see some support rotations. Since, since that mid lane is so focused on being able to kill each other, I'm sure the power runes are going to play a pretty integral part to uh, what's going to be happening. Yeah, this is just a level dependent game. Both teams have heavy push lineups, which means most of the time they're going to lack kill potential early. 
And it's all on the back of these mid heroes who both heavily rely on their ultimates to get the job done. So I'm sure the pace of this game is going to ramp up pretty damn quick, but uh, definitely an expected slow but sure start. Taiga being harassed so much, he actually had to pull the creep wave into the tier 3, so he won't, won't actually pull the creep equilibrium back at all, which is uh, really not to the favor of Boxy, who's kind of suffering as a level behind Shad right now. Uh, lane's looking a bit more rough. Seems like Lycan is just fine. They're actually going to bring the Crystal Maiden down to its boss lane. Not necessarily needed anymore. They can actually roll on to Shad here. Shad trying to get those Yiku stacks up. Does manage to get it. Boss Maiden turns around. Throws the ball up. That means they won't be able to stop any life steal to come out. Now they're going to body block Celery up. He does have his feather, but the Green Wave is not there in time. What a great setup from Liquid and the Glitter was just beautiful there as well. Back over to mid lane though, the support showing bottom lane being mid is free. Bear missed to be able to rotate yeah. off. Yeah. This will yeah, kill that, you. Uh, that, that just made me so excited, man. That was a really oh. nice oh. return. Oh. Oh. I got a TV sentence. I didn't even mean to watch that. I just had my per perspective like chilling in the mid lane talking about that last point and Tyga just catches him off guard and suddenly he's almost level five. Five minutes into the game. And they're just gonna hover around this mid lane and Radiant's a big Mickey for bottle charges so they can potentially go again here. But Aramis. He also got urn charges there. Yeah. He just got his urn. That's even more important. Yeah, he uh he actually used one of the urn charges to, I think he he healed the puck in lane and then used offensively on the void spirit and then just got two of those charges back. It's uh pretty sick for Tyga. Six bit of power root. Spirit seems to carry. Oh, it is no. Okay, he's gonna die here. The roll from Tyga does grab the DD. See if uh, no shack. Uh, whoever gets level six first in the matchup so just owns fire. the other guy. You saw it there. Puck is eventually gonna use orb to farm, and then suddenly Void Spirit can just double astro step you and kill you. On the other hand, if Puck gets six first, spoils you, and you have nothing to get away, as we see. Uh, Boxy is managing to scrape together some farm in the bottom lane. He's also the same level as Monkey King, which is pretty crazy, but we'll all yeah, he's he's under attack. Now, he's gonna die with, uh, no slosh buckle up to be able to get away. Get the distance. Shad looks like he's probably falling a level behind. Looking at top lane, looks like Toby almost has his level 6 and his Necro book. I have no idea how well a solo Lycan is able to pressure a solo Lone Druid when it comes to both I think them he should be them. able to. I don't think a Lone Druid can deal with these uh, Necro books. Maybe I'm mistaken, though. I, I honestly don't know for sure. He just doesn't have any AoE damage or anything like that. Yeah, he also has, like, a very low mana pool, so I could see a world where he pops true form and he has so much HP that, like, he's not necessarily threatened so much, but... Not on my have to wait and see it's not going to be a solo battle though supports coming in on both sides because i feel like they they both I, yeah i think they both understand Radiant that one guy could just murder the other at any given moment now that they've come to their power spikes so this is the very important times to make sure you don't have <laughs> it happen to your side basically for so long yeah these are the moments where i get reminded on monkey king that sometimes you're just never supposed to use your stun i know for a fact that liquid just saw him use his stun and it was like get him guys yeah and they just all went on him and that was a moment where i was like oh is he gonna stun them and and kill them all and instead it's on cooldown for another five seconds and it's just not a coincidence they know exactly what it takes for monkey king to stand his ground and turn the engagement but as liquid 
looking to get even more done now Dyer's that Tango has hit the and attack. both supports are six. Nine minutes in. They're gonna run right into Boom, and Boom in turn runs into them when the actual Radiant's step gets a good amount of damage. It's gonna be rolled on though. As the other actual step to go, but Box is gonna join him here. Not gonna be able to go for the Void Spirit. He's the same escape mechanism. in the mid lane cut over and get a kill on aramis as well three to eight is now liquid begin to extend a bit of a network Turn up the witch blade on puck a lot of mid game damage coming out from him as pretty much every core in the game is having a decent start but all the kills have been going in favor of liquid so since everybody on the map is rich you're actually getting so much from getting these kills sometimes we'll see the kill score be eight to three and have there be barely any of a difference because maybe they killed a bunch of supports maybe they were picking on the offlaner but all six cores are about even Bounty. at the beginning of the laning phase you know Dyer's around five six tap. minutes in suddenly, these kills have really swung the momentum suddenly three thousand net worth ten what minutes in timings are going to come out fast for liquid can they get anything done behind this lichen is my question he's got his ultimate he hasn't used it yet he's got necro book radiant bottom tower is coming. under attack uh, that net worth lead is about to get even bigger brian they're farming up uh, quad stacks in the right now i just checked my gg side Dyer's there's nothing like that so that is Switches. a huge amount of experience in gold that he just got just that net worth uh, chart up a little bit more insane he is in some trouble though he's trying to defend this tower so Boxy might be able to take advantage of this unless he's going to up on the line. He does make sure to get off the Rolling Thunder. He's still susceptible to some visual damage, but because of their melee, they can't really go for it. In fact, now with the coil here from the puck, they're going to be able to control up Kobe. And he's going to down. He dies. Chat jumps into the middle of this fight. He's unable to hit his teeth. The remnant, though, and Taiga keeping his distance. Now the next round of spells coming up for Mickey. He's got a silence. That's going to kill Shad. Now they're going to chase down Boom, potentially. No, nope, they're saying, okay, we're out of spells. Let's not push Dyer's their luck too top. much here. I've got to go defend mid anyway. As there's a serpent ward push coming out from Aramis. With the siege wagon, got it to be able to deal with this. In fact, they might. Uh, he's a little bit outside the wards here. Looks like he will manage to play in time. But still, a lot of damage on the tower. Bare minimum. Uh, entirely taken it. Oh, they do actually uh, get Taiga at the top lane. So manage to get a uh, mega kill tower. streak. Top That's of that with the mid tower going. All right, a little bit of windfall for uh, Viking GG towards the the tail end of all that yeah i was starting to wonder if they were just going to get steamrolled but they do both line of life here top top out from the radiant under attack I, I just don't know when it gets better Dyer's for them i feel like fight. what i mentioned during the draft is the, or like after the draft is that lichen has a harder time as the game goes on actually fighting into the opponent this is the moment in the game. This is his timing when he gets Dyer's these early necro builds that he's supposed to be kind of just marching down lanes, taking builds. And instead, he's kind of just farming his own safe lane here. Radiant's here middle two, tower while the is rest under of his attack. team is playing the map. And this is just not exactly what I'm sure they had in mind uh, at this stage in the game. Yeah, it feels like they're, they're waiting for that biggest power spike in the necro book three, but it also feels like uh, Quake is kind of following him around. <laughs> uh, so I, he, maybe it's just because of the fear. He, he doesn't really, he's not scared of the lichen at all. Radiant I think he knows he can TP scanning. with it, right? He yeah. Knows he can TP away. Away. I think that's a worthwhile trade in his eyes as free kill on the witch it looks like as Mickey does have the witch blade complete. Uh, the amount of damage. Get your intelligence. Poison for three seconds on top of the burst that Puck already has. At this stage, it's 270 damage. It's basically an extra nuke, right? You have two nukes already of the Waning Rift and the Looser, Looser Orb. Now you have a third one. Yeah, and the cooldown is very, very closely matched with the Looser Orb and the Rift. So, pretty much, you get a second round of... Oh, yeah. 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 My Tiger gets out the Rolling Thunder inside the Coil again. Two down from Jen. Why, oh why, are we taking that fight there?
liquid. They seemed well prepared and well set up. They just inside of their own jungle. Because that 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 is kind of what you're talking about, right? And, and I know how Viking GG want to be able to take this ideally, where they want to be uh, pushing. It all comes around to Viking team. Yeah, it really has felt like Liquid is like basically peeking into Viking GG's playbook this game. Kind of just a step ahead the entire time. Maybe they're stream sniping on the 15 minute delay. You know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they would be just coming out of the, the draft right now if they're streaming. <laughs> oh, big sorry, I saw the 8K so. network lead. I thought it was later in the game. <laughs> you, know? I, you, you know, you're forgiven for that. It's uh, a 9,000 net worth lead this early on is uh, kind of a one-sided game, which is not what I expected, especially from Viking GG, seeing as this team has been, I feel like, um, what of Liquid's <laughs> toughest rivals. You know, Blitz will try and tell me all day long that, hey, Radiant we won the series that were important, but it is still much, many more serious global agents than by including the last <laughs> Top lane, they do manage to get a kill on Insania, but in turn, the support of Viking Chi Chi Terramus falls at bottom. Yeah, I, I feel like Liquid's the team that's going to decide how this game, how this series goes. They're the most polarizing in terms of their performances. I feel like we're getting the, the tier one liquid. Sometimes we see the tier three liquid. Uh, we're definitely seeing the tier one like execution and just honestly crispness with every movement they've made. I feel like every time I look at the map where their heroes are placed, you know, the Crystal Maiden feeds to a gank and now the Pango feels safe enough to go farm the top dangerous part of the map. They're putting all their kill heroes together. You saw the Earth Spirit kick with the coil combo. I didn't hear I was gonna die to that, right? That coil snap, it's meant to be punishing. You're meant to yeah. have to walk yeah. out of it. Instead, he's just gonna kick you right out. Soon he may even have, uh, he could get both of the talents too. 30 damage and phase shift attack. He really wants to get that right click build. I think it's a good idea against this flank. You've got so many targets out there that are gonna get me to chase him on the Lycan before he can get on the shape shift. Good lunge just there. Looks like Taiga may be pulled back, but they're gonna blow a lot of spells from a distance just to bring Taiga down to half. So, hey, you're looking Dive. at this. Oh, scary. It looks like to me, Liquid killing so we can shoot on the back. Probably gonna take this tier two and take the outpost before 20 minutes, which is again another sign of how one-sided this game is. Radiant's bottom tower. So I know you play some like melee fours and stuff Radiant's that may build inside them, but in general, how does it feel to play Radiant's this pack like the guy that can build the world of three? I feel like that item is because Insania did die in that team fight to the favor of Lick. 
Yeah, he does end up taking the 30 damage in the phase shift attack. The AoE damage already showing itself to help clear the Lycan summons. I feel like that's kind of the final straw. I feel like they deal with most of Viking GG's lineup just kind of like with their hero's kit already. And now the puck is kind of just sealed the deal. Okay. Yeah, maybe it would be a different story if we were talking about a monkey king.